living a healthy, balanced life is no small feat, especially when you're a mom. With meals to cook, laundry to load, work to do, and humans to raise, it can be easy to feel like we're in an on-again, off-again relationship with healthy living. But it doesn't have to feel this way. I believe living a healthy life has become way too complicated. What we need isn't a new plan or program telling us what to eat or how to live. We need simple, uncomplicated routines and information that's going to help us live our best, most beautiful life without rules and restrictions. Join me, Kristen Dofniak, holistic health coach, certified intuitive eating counselor, and mama of two for weekly conversations on what it means to live a healthy, balanced life, uncomplicate eating, and simplify in every area of mom life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Healthy Balance Mama podcast and welcome to the official last episode of 2020. Don't worry, the podcast isn't going anywhere, but this is the last episode of the year and what a year it has been. I actually have to admit that this is the second time I am recording this end of the year overview check-in I first went to record this in late October, and as he was leaving the house, my husband, I told him that I was recording this, and my husband said to me, really? Isn't it a little bit early? A lot can happen in two months. And well, he was right, which I don't like to admit. Any of you who are married, it's really hard to admit your spouse is right, but he was right. A lot has happened in the last couple of months, and a lot that I wanted to share with you guys and just some more clarity on some of the things that are coming up in the new year in the Healthy Balanced Mamas world. And so I am sitting here in mid-December just reflecting on what a year it has been. And I just want to spend this time with you reflecting on the year past and also chatting about what you can expect from Healthy Balanced Mama in the year ahead. So we started the year in January as any other year, but we actually entered into the new year in a really, really different situation as a family. Right at the start of the new year, my husband started his very own business. He has worked for a corporation for the last decade since just before we first got married and In this last year, he decided to go off on his own. He got a business partner and he started his own management company along with the professional racing that he has been doing. Well, we'll talk more about that after. Obviously, that changed with what happened in the new in in this year. But he started a new business. And so we entered basically into the new year within the first week with him going into business with this friend that he's had since college, doing all the legal stuff, the accounting stuff, like jumping right in to being a business owner, and both of us jumping in to the world of both being entrepreneurs. And I won't lie, this was both the most exciting time in our lives and also the most terrifying because we were, for the first time ever, in a position where no one was paying our bills but us. So it was really, really exciting, incredible, overwhelming. I'm really thankful that at that time, my oldest daughter was still in public school. She was in kindergarten at the time. And so that gave us a little bit of wiggle room. Our youngest was in daycare a couple times a week, and she's still in daycare a couple times a week. And having a little bit of that space for both of us to sort of figure out our businesses. I could continue to grow my business. I launched the second year of the Super Mama Society, which was just so exciting. I brought in a lot of changes in the new year. And as you'll hear, there's a lot of changes coming in to the new year ahead as well, because I'm constantly growing and evolving in the ways that I really want to serve all of you as my community. So I'm kind of working on figuring that out. He's starting a new business and it was a really, a really crazy time in our lives. I was also really busy working on the launch of my first food freedom course, Uncomplicated Eating. So even though I didn't actually launch this until March, I had been working on it from like November, December 2019. And It was such a fun experience to be able to really put a ton of 
not just knowledge and experience into the actual course. I really feel like this course is like my life's work all poured into one, but also to be able to do it right. So I did my first ever like real photo shoot and video shoot with a handful of friends. My sister helped out that day. It was just such a cool experience to really be able to put something into the world that I felt just so, so proud of both the content and also the presentation. So I was working a ton on that in January. And like I said, my husband's working on his business too. And overall, it seemed to be going well. However, towards the end of January, I mentioned this briefly um, when I was talking with Katherine Herbison um, earlier this year about our digestive health journeys, which I'll mention a little bit more of in a little bit, but she was one of my top episodes of 2020, not only because she's just an incredible human, and I'm just so grateful to be friends with her and to be able to connect with her about our digestive issues and intuitive eating, and she's been on the podcast twice now, but in that episode, I shared with her and with all of you that I had actually struggled with an anxiety attack at the end of January that landed me in the ER. Now, I am not someone who likes to go to the doctor. I have always had white coat syndrome. So has my dad. It's just sort of like a, I mean, I've always definitely struggled with anxiety. It's been the last few years that I've really come to terms with it and really learned some positive coping mechanisms for it. When I was living in Canada, uh, before I was pregnant with Sage, who's seven now, so we're talking like almost eight years ago, I had my first ever panic attack and we realized it was probably due to the fact that my vitamin D levels had dropped really, really low, probably because I moved from um, the East Coast up to Canada. It was a lot darker and I was not outside as much because I was in school at the time and then I was working in kitchens and We're not exactly sure how it happened, but I experienced a few panic attacks at that time. So that was kind of my first experience realizing that I struggled with anxiety. And it was an interesting situation this year because I don't think that I felt the stress in the way that I have felt stress at other points in my life. It was really one of these situations where I was just going, going, going at full speed. And I think that there was this like inner stress and anxiety um, about things like money, making sure we were paying the bills, which I'm very thankful, you know, has been something that that has been okay. But these are in the early stages, right? These are like the first few weeks of going, oh my gosh, now we have to pay our own bills without having anyone else, you know, I mean, not that anyone else paid our bills, but there's no corporation that he's working for. I am working for myself. He's working for himself. And then just the stress of mom life and balancing all of it on top of that, even though it didn't feel like an outward stress. I loved working with my clients. I loved working with the women in the Super Mama Society. I loved hanging out with my kids. I love, I loved and love all of the things that I was doing, but it certainly took a toll on my health. And I clearly was not taking care of myself as well as I needed to. Because I was sitting at my computer um, in late January editing a podcast episode and all of a sudden my hands went numb. And I was like, what is happening? And I kind of, you know, picked my hands up off of the computer and kind of, you know, moved my fingers around and I could move them and that kind of comforted me a little bit. But that only started my heart racing more because I was like, oh my gosh, I've never had this happen before. And the numbness started to go away in my hands, but I just felt this kind of like overall feeling of unease. And so I, like I said, don't love going to the doctor. So I didn't want to have to go to the ER, but I knew that the symptoms that I was experiencing, I also had some dizziness and a couple other symptoms. I knew that they weren't normal. And so I decided to go ahead and book an appointment at the walk-in clinic, which is like less than 10 minutes down the road. And they immediately called me back and told me I had to go to the ER, that they wouldn't accept me and that they would call ahead and tell them I was coming. And I was like, okay, guess I'm on my way to the ER. So I called my parents to come and watch the kiddos and we headed over to the ER and other than my blood pressure being a little bit high um which I have a, I have a history of anyway not regularly but when I was pregnant my blood pressure was high and whenever I'm stressed my at least my systolic blood pressure gets a little bit high and other than that and my my pulse being a little bit high 
everything else checked out. And I felt so silly being someone who has a health background and not recognizing that what I was what I was experiencing wasn't a stroke or a heart attack, but it was a an anxiety attack. And so the doctor was basically like, you just need to chill out. Has there been anything stressful happening in your life? And I'm like, um, <laughs> sort of. And um, so he told me to take a rest, to take a little bit of a break. And that was sort of the way that I entered into the new year. I think I entered into the new year realizing that I needed to approach life a little bit differently. That here I was preaching to moms about stressing less about food. And that's something that I'd worked through for so many years and I wasn't stressing about anymore, but I had put so much other stress on myself in other areas it, that I, I needed to take better care of myself. I realized that I needed to take more time off, that I needed to do those self-care things that seem so cliche but are necessary for our mental health and that our mental health also affects our physical health. And it was a really, really important revelation for me. And interestingly enough, I was working through the stress and the anxiety after the anxiety attack and kind of coming to terms with that and deciding what that would look like in my life as an entrepreneur and a mom of two and a wife and, and all of these roles that I play. And a couple months after that, kind of in the early stages of all of the pandemic stuff, I started struggling with digestive issues again, digestive issues that I hadn't been struggling with for five to seven years, really, really longer than that, though, probably, probably before I was pregnant with my daughter, my first daughter, Sage, was the last time I really, really experienced digestive problems like I did this year. And there was no doubt in my mind that that was a result of the stress that my body was experiencing as a trigger for my IBS that I've had for decades now. It's been something that I've struggled with for um, and lived with for 20 years now. And I've learned how to thrive with it. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit, um, you know, thriving in my body and in my health. But it was it was really, really revealing that this is something that needs to be a focus, especially if I am spending my time helping other women stress less in their lives. I need to find that balance, not just with food and fitness, but in every area of my life. Because health is holistic. It's 360 degrees. It's not just food and fitness. It's also our mental, emotional health, our spiritual health, our relational health. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before. But it's not a line. It is a circle. And we really need to be consistently pouring into each one of those areas because when one gets out of alignment, then all of them suffer. So that was kind of how I started my year. Another really fun and interesting thing that we started our year with is the fact that we knew that this was going to be our 10-year wedding anniversary. Um, and we haven't – my husband's been on the podcast a couple times. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to have him on the podcast again next year to talk a little bit about our journey because we have certainly <laughs> – not had uh, an easy journey in our relationship. We are constantly working on it, um, but it's been a decade now of us being married, and we had never officially gone on a honeymoon. We got married really young. Um, I was 21. I just turned 21. It was the week after I turned 21, and he was 23, and we had kids young. And so because we had like no money when we got married, we got married really quick um, within three months because I wanted to immigrate to Canada. I had been going to culinary school there and I just graduated and we knew that if we didn't get married, then I would have to go back to the US. And so we got married pretty quickly. We'd already been dating for two years at that point. So it wasn't like a total whirlwind, but we got married really quickly. And so we didn't have money for a honeymoon. So we went on like a little three-day yoga retreat, which was wonderful, but not a true, not a true honeymoon because we weren't even by ourselves. We were in a group the whole time. So we decided to plan our honeymoon slash 10-year anniversary trip to Tuscany in late February. Now, at this point, we had heard about 
what is now the pandemic. Um, but we didn't at all think that it was going to be something that was going to turn into what it is now. I think it had already hit the U.S., but I don't think we could have ever predicted. I don't think any of us could have ever predicted how crazy it was going to get that we were going to be locked down. And I think we saw it, it coming as something that was, you know, going to be something that we were going to have to deal with as a society. However, I think that we thought that it was just something that was going to pass by August when we had planned on our trip, which obviously did not happen. <laughs> because when March rolled around, that was when we were first put into lockdown. And it was such a funny week, actually, looking back to it, because at that point, um, Nick's business was thriving, which was just such a relief. And that was certainly helping with my stress levels. And I had, um, I was just about to release Uncomplicated Eating, which was both like the worst timing in the world and also the best timing in the world because I knew that in that time of added stress, so many women needed the support and still need the support of being able to find food freedom with a resource that they can take on their own at their own pace at a rate that's affordable so they don't feel like they are, you know, shelling out money for a coach and feeling like pressured into having to, I guess I've had clients in the past that tell me that um, sometimes it feels better to have our coaching spaced out because they feel like, oh my gosh, I have to like get things done in between our meetings. And that's certainly not true. Um, everyone's journey is different and every week is going to be different. And sometimes you're going to make progress and sometimes you're just going to keep on keeping on. But the benefit of a course is that it is self-paced and it is something that you can do in your own time and take it step by step and spend as much time as you need to listening and re-listening to the modules and utilizing the workbooks. There is a workbook for every single module in Uncomplicated Eating. So though releasing a course at the beginning of a pandemic <laughs> was never something I had planned and could it have gone better if I had not done it then absolutely but I'm glad I didn't wait because I know the women who needed to get into that course in those early stages when I first had it on sale it's still available now it'll always be available um, but when I was available kind of right away I think those women really needed it. And so I'm glad that I didn't wait because, I mean, we, the pandemic is still going on. And if I had waited, then it probably still wouldn't be out, right? There was never a right time. So in that first week of lockdown, I'm really in the early stages of getting ready to launch Uncomplicated Eating, like final, final stages, ready to launch it. My husband's away because his business is thriving and he's sailing and he was actually sailing offshore. So... When all of the crazy pandemic stuff started to blow up, it was so we are about an hour and a half away from Boston. And there was some stuff that happened in Boston. And when my mom heard about it, she watches the kids once a week and takes them overnight. She was like, why don't you come and stay with us for a couple days just in case? <laughs> because Nick was gone. He was offshore. He had no idea that any of this stuff was happening. And when he got back into Miami, he was like, oh my goodness, what happened with the world? Everyone was starting to lock down. We were actually afraid that he wasn't going to be able to get back into the U.S. And thankfully he was. It was before they shut the borders. But I can't imagine if it was even like two or three weeks later. They canceled school at that point and we went into distance learning. And oh my goodness, I have so much I could say about distance learning. It was honestly really hard for me and Nick, like it was for most of you, I think, just because we work at home, um, I think there's a whole new level if you haven't, if you hadn't already been working from home or you hadn't already had your kids at home. I think that there was definitely, you know, it affected people in different ways, but it was really hard for us, like it was for many of you, having both of the kids at home, juggling, distance learning. Um, my daughter's teacher, oh my goodness, she was just so, so wonderful and absolutely did the best she could, but distance learning did not work out for my daughter. She was just, she was not thriving. She was struggling with the calls every day. We're like an hour and a half, and that took away from both of our work time as well as our time, you know, with our little one who was just like going crazy. Like, I can't see my friend my sisters on these calls it was it was really tough and so 
kind of to backtrack, we thought that he wasn't going to be able to get home. He gets home. We come back. We have to quarantine for a couple of weeks, of course. And we weren't going anywhere anyways for a long time except to the grocery store. And so we were at home. We were both trying to work from home. We were distance learning. And we actually made the decision uh, to homeschool before school even ended, figuring that next year, if it looks anything like distance learning, there was just no way. (laughs) There was no way that we were going to make that work. So we decided that having an actual routine and rhythm to our family was just going to be so much more beneficial. So once my youngest daughter was able to go back to daycare, she went back to daycare twice a week. But um, we decided to homeschool my second daughter. And so far, so good. It has my second daughter. She's actually my first sage. (laughs) So um, yeah, it it's it's been really wonderful and i'm going to talk more about homeschooling in the future because i've had a lot of questions about it and it's certainly not my i'm not an expert this is only our second year of homeschooling but our first official year we homeschooled her for pre-k um because she wasn't doing great at the preschool that she was at and so we decided just to to homeschool her for the year before kindergarten so that was super super casual we you know letters numbers handwriting things like that and uh, this year i'm teaching her how to read which <laughs> If you had asked me when I was pregnant or when we were thinking about having kids, if I was ever going to homeschool and teach my kiddo how to read, I would certainly have said no. But it has been such a great experience. And that's something I'll talk more about in the future. But at this point in time, we were still distance learning and trying to work through that. And most all of my husband's sailing got canceled after that, which was really hard for both of us. And it was a really, really interesting experience because in 10 years of marriage, we've never seen each other so much. (laughs) So we were all together more than we ever had been. And I think like many of you, it was both a really great experience and also just like a really difficult experience um, trying to, to balance it all and to manage it all. And I'm so, so thankful that we We were with my parents from the very beginning. So we stayed with my parents in those early stages. We quarantined for them from them for two weeks because, you know, for safety purposes, after my husband had traveled, he had gone on an airplane and thankfully he was fine. Anytime he's traveled um, since then, he's gotten tested before and after. So thankfully, we've been able to be really cautious, um, but we have been able to be back and forth between our house and my parents' house this whole time. And that is honest to goodness the only reason that we have been able to keep our businesses running because my parents have been amazing taking the girls, um, helping me. Like I use my mom's space quite a bit, her office space to record podcasts and to get on client calls when the kids need to be home. When the co-work space that we work at wasn't open, we were doing that a lot. So it was a really, really interesting time. And I think it's a really interesting time for other people. And I hope that knowing that it wasn't easy for us um, and knowing that I do believe that we can hold the space for it being both a wonderful time in many ways and also a really, really hard time in many ways. Um, I hope that brings you a little bit of a little bit of comfort or solidarity there. Like we were we were in this together and we are still in this together because we still don't know what it's going to look like next year. And I have no doubt in my mind that things are not going to magically change on January 1st. Um, But I do think that we can enter into the new year with a new perspective. And I think that's a lot of what I've learned in 2020 from everything that we've experienced. Something that I started doing in the early stages of the pandemic was um, Melissa, who is the founder of the Flourish Fund, which is a really, really cool online baby registry website. She has owned several businesses in the local area, and we connected a few years ago. I am one of the practitioners for the business that she owns as a holistic health and nutrition coach. And she reached out and asked if I wanted to do some online cooking classes for her business on their Facebook page. And I jumped at it because I have been teaching cooking classes for a decade now since I graduated culinary school and I was working in a holistic nutrition studio. I was going to school for holistic nutrition. I was working as a personal chef and also teaching cooking classes, both at the school and private cooking classes. And it is by far one of my absolute favorite things to do. I feel like I just, I come alive when I'm cooking. It is, I'm just so, so grateful. Honestly, the, 
one part of my food freedom, intuitive eating, balanced eating journey that I am the most grateful for other than my relationships is being able to cook and the joy being back into cooking and eating again. And I felt so long that the culinary side of my business was really separate from the intuitive eating and the balanced eating side of my business. And so I think that I, for a long time, kept things like my cooking classes really separate from the other things that I was sharing on Instagram and on Facebook. And this was just such a wonderful introduction to be able to share not only my skills as a chef, um, even so, I don't cook like a Michelin star chef. I cook like a mom who knows how to season food really well and has some great knife skills. And that is what I always hope to share with all of you whenever I teach cooking classes, that you can be confident in the kitchen and that you can cook no matter what training you've had. It doesn't have to be hard. You can cook from scratch. I love sharing that. And I was teaching cooking classes here locally for a couple of years. Um, Obviously, that stopped this. um, I'd actually stopped doing that in the fall of the year before just because things had gotten so busy with my online business but I missed it. And so I think that that was just such a wonderful way to really start to bring that joy and that skill set into the business that I have now in a way that felt really natural. And as the summer rolled around, I really started feeling a shift in my business. It was around this time, around my birthday at the end of July, that I recorded the season two finale of the podcast, where I shared some of my thoughts about what I was starting to see happening in the intuitive eating community. And honestly, there were some things that were happening that were making me, they were making me really uncomfortable. And I was really trying to work through that. Something that I was seeing a lot of was intuitive eating, we'll we'll call it intuitive eating branded, okay? Some of them are intuitive eating counselors, some of them are dietitians, nutritionists, just people in the intuitive eating space. We're oftentimes taking an extreme stance when it came to intuitive eating, and they still are. I have just, um, I think, moved away from interacting with a lot of that now. And it was... It was making me really uncomfortable that there was there was a lot of it seemed like there was a lot of professionals out there who were trying to tell people that there was one right way to be an intuitive eater. That if you focus on health and wellness and those type of if you have those type of pursuits and those type of values that you can't be an intuitive eater. And they weren't coming right out and saying that. But there was a lot of, it felt like divisiveness in the world of intuitive eating and a lot of extremes. Like if you're an intuitive eater, you can't focus on health. Like, oh yeah, yeah, gentle nutrition is part of it, but you should be eating whatever you want, anytime, no matter what. And it was feeling very extreme and... That is not the way that I want my clients and the women in my community to experience the things that I share or intuitive eating as a whole. I believe that intuitive eating is the foundation and the path to eating in a way that is balanced and eating in a way that helps you to feel good, that is in alignment with your values, whatever those might be. And if you value health and wellness, I truly believe that that can be a part of intuitive eating. Intuitive eating saved me, my relationships, But I also have several certifications in nutrition and holistic health because I love wellness and I want to share that. And I truly believe that we can intentionally embrace health from a place of balance. And that starts with ditching diets, ditching diet culture, tuning into our bodies, but that we can also move forward with intention. And we can marry intuition and intention and find that balance and I want the women in my community to feel like food isn't stressful, but to also feel like health and wellness is available for them without turning to diets or diet culture. 
And I think that it was like feeling very much like this like anti-diet movement was being was very extreme and in a lot of in a lot of ways and was feeling like it was almost the complete opposite side of diet culture. It was like diet culture on one side and this like very divisive anti-dieting space on the other side. And I don't operate in that space anymore. I really have taken a lot of time in working on myself and working with clients in my community on embracing that gray area. And that is ultimately what I want to bring to all of you is that space where food feels free, where you can eat all types of food with complete and total freedom, without guilt, without shame, without shoulds or shouldn'ts, cans or can'ts, but that you can also embrace living a healthy life in a way that feels really good for you. If you're here, you probably feel the same way too. And when I had a couple experiences where I I almost felt a little called out by people in the intuitive eating space for mentioning things like using the word healthy or talking about creating a balanced plate or you know things that are just going to help to over, to improve our overall health and wellness I started to question not intuitive eating but where I was in the intuitive eating space and what the intuitive eating space had become and so I think it was at that point I really started shifting a little bit more towards speaking in terms of balance and really helping women find this place of balance. I mean, this is the Healthy Balanced Mama podcast and Find Your Beautiful Balance has been my tagline for seven years. And it has taken me almost all of those seven years to really truly find my own beautiful balance. And my mission is to help you find that too. And I think that I was also at the same time struggling really deeply with digestive issues, which I hadn't spoken about a ton in the past because I hadn't really been struggling with them. But the stress of the year um, brought up a couple different flare-ups of my digestive issues. And I wanted to start sharing about that. I wanted to start sharing about the fact that intuitive eating doesn't always feel so intuitive, especially when you have health concerns. But that doesn't mean we can't practice listening to our bodies or that we have to go on a restrictive plan. Sometimes we do need to go on a plan that feels a little bit more restrictive in order to heal our bodies. And we obviously want to be doing that with a trained professional. But it's, it's necessary sometimes and there's nothing wrong with that and there's nothing anti-intuitive about recognizing that you need a little bit of help and your body needs a little bit more care. And so I am so passionate about also sharing the benefits of holistic health and caring for our bodies well through anxiety, through digestive issues, through whatever you're going through and really validate you if you are feeling like intuitive eating doesn't feel so intuitive and you know you've got health concerns and you really want to work towards balance this is the place for you you are so welcome here and I want you to know that there is a place of balance and middle ground to be found even if you are struggling we can hold the space for both. I can hold the space for both. I can live and breathe and eat and teach and love intuitive eating. And I also don't feel the need to be picketing for anti-diet because I am fully anti-diet culture, but I can still show up authentically as me with my story, all facets of it, eating disorder, dieting, fitness competitions, anxiety, digestive health, all of these areas. And I can help women. I can help you with both an intuitive eating approach to find freedom with food and then also the approach of working towards finding balance for energy and for overall health and wellness and then also help to direct you if you do need further healing and let you know that it's okay. It's okay to admit that we need a little bit more help and that it's not feeling so intuitive anymore. And that we can start working towards balance, whatever, whatever that means for us and for our bodies. My ultimate goal is to help you to show up as the best version of yourselves. And I want to do the same for myself. 
I want to show up as the best version of myself and do it in a way that feels authentic to me. And I want my business to reflect that and my work to reflect that. And I do believe ultimately that balanced eating can be joyful and fun and balance doesn't need to be boring it doesn't have to be so serious we don't have to be just constantly calling out diet culture just calling out diet culture isn't going to help you to move forward into the balanced eater that I know that you can be outside of diets outside of this on again off again cycle because healing our relationship with food it is work right it does take time But the benefits are so incredible and we really shouldn't be made to feel like we're doing it wrong if we also want to pursue health and wellness. We need to get to that place of a positive relationship with food before we can start making nutrition changes, but both are available. And I want you to know that and I want you to know that I am here to share that with you. So late in the summer, I took some time off in August to celebrate our 10-year anniversary, what was supposed to be our honeymoon trip to Tuscany, which obviously didn't happen. But instead, what I decided to do was take a week off of social media for the first time in almost seven years. And this was just such a great time to reflect on all of the things I just shared with you, to reflect on where I was in my business, where I was going how I really wanted to show up in this world of intuitive eating, balanced eating, even the culinary world. And I am so, so grateful that I took that time, that I took that real break and was able to come back really feeling like I had a deeper purpose for the way that I want to go about sharing things. And It was actually the end of August that I hired my very first virtual assistant. So I've had interns in the past, but this is my first ever assistant, which was both scary and exciting, kind of like when we both started our businesses at the beginning. Well, I mean, I had already had my business, but when my husband started his business at the beginning of the year. But my goodness, she has been the biggest blessing to my business and myself. We have the absolute best relationship and I am not letting her go ever, ever, ever. (laughs) If you hear this, Ramsey, which you probably will, you're never allowed to leave. (laughs) But what she did is she took a lot of the load off my shoulders of some of the things in my business that I really didn't need to be doing and helped me to free up some brain space to really look into the future of Healthy Balanced Mama and Healthy Mama Chris And to really make some big decisions around my business, to focus on the clients that I had then and to focus on how I wanted to move forward in my business. And in September, I made the decision that I was going to stop one-on-one coaching and focus on group coaching. This was both a family decision just based on my husband now and his job being one that he has to be on on call, so to speak, quite a bit. He travels quite a bit. He hasn't been traveling very much due to the pandemic, but he is starting to travel more. And he is and just some of the some of the shifts and changes that we're going to be making in the new year, some of which we're clear on, some of which we're not. It was mostly a family decision that I wasn't able to give my clients the full attention that they really needed from me. And so, and I also have always loved and personally benefited from being in a group when it comes to something like finding freedom with food and really embracing something that is in many ways countercultural, embracing balance instead of dieting. It can be really, really helpful and beneficial if we go about that and we feel supported not just from a coach, but from other women who are also going through that. So we don't feel alone. And I was also feeling very convicted that I don't want women to feel like they can't afford to find food freedom. Because you can read the intuitive eating book and it's wonderful. You can do the workbook and it's great, but there is nothing that beats coaching to help you through the process of finding balance, whether it's intuitive eating or balanced eating without dieting, whatever it is, actually having someone to be able to ask your personal questions to. And then also other women who are right there going, yeah, that's hard for me too, but I'm working through it. 
I want to provide that space for being both a part of a community and then also the opportunity for affordable one-on-one coaching. And so that's where I decided that I love my one-on-one clients, but it was time to move forward from one-on-one coaching and really, really put my energy into the Supermama Society, which is my group coaching membership that has been around since 2018 now, and it'll be it'll be no 2019 since mid 2019 and it'll be 2 years old in May and I also decided to bring back the Healthy Balanced Mamas Facebook community. So if you guys aren't already a part of that, we are like almost 250 people strong so far. I just revamped it. So um, we have so so much room to grow, but it is just facebook.com/healthybalancedmamas. Totally free, but that is the place where I share about this week's podcast episode. We share uh, meal ideas and meal plans. It's a place for you to connect with me. And then I'm also, I've also moved my Friday live coffee chats over there. So I'll talk about a new topic when it comes to living a balanced mama life over there every single Friday, you know, barring holidays, as well as a book club, which we just started in November. We're pausing for December, but we will be back in January. So we're all reading a nonfiction book together that relates to balance in our mom life in one area or another. And it has just been so, so wonderful to connect with the women both in the Super Mama Society as well as in the Healthy Balanced Mamas community and really feel like I am able to help women at different levels with their journey as balanced eaters. Of course, I also re-released Healthy Mama Meal Prep and I felt so confident doing that. I think with this new mindset of really understanding that balance is about more than just intuitive eating, women also need practical advice and tips to learn how to meal plan and meal prep in a way that isn't restrictive or diet focused, but will help them take the stress out of getting meals on the table. And I'm so passionate about that, like like I am with cooking and teaching women how to cook, because how much less stressful is it when we don't feel like we're tense every time we go into the kitchen, we're trying to figure out what's for dinner when we have things prepped ahead, when we have things planned ahead, when we are confident cooking in the kitchen, it just, it makes our relationship with food better from a, just a completely different angle as well. So I started teaching live cooking classes on Instagram this past fall on Thursdays, and these will definitely be continuing into the new year. And what's really, really cool, I think about all of this is I feel in in many ways that I am coming full circle in my business from this place where I had just come from nutrition school. I went to culinary school. I created a pretend business plan for the business course that I was taking in culinary school, and it was called Flavors of Health. And I was going to help people. I was going to help teach people as both a um, a culinary instructor, and I also wanted to do personal chef, which I did end up doing for several years. And I wanted to teach them how to cook food that is healthy and delicious. And so 10 years later, (laughs) I graduated culinary school in 2010. And so 10 years later, I feel like I'm coming full circle in so many ways, but with a whole new perspective, mindset, and a decade of learning, both education, several certifications, as well as just personal experience with helping women find balance and, and also teaching cooking classes. So ultimately... To start to kind of wrap things up, I think what I learned the most in 2021 and what I'm so in 2021, what I learned the most in 2020 and what I'm so excited to bring into 2021 was how to be me unapologetically. I know how cheesy that sounds, seriously, but I realized how much I was trying to fit into what I thought others wanted me to be as a holistic health and nutrition coach, as a chef, as a podcaster. As an intuitive eating counselor, all of these different roles I played, I thought they needed to be separate. And I was really trying to live up to other people's expectations of how I thought they wanted me to show up. And I was feeling very divided. And what I learned is that it's okay if I don't fit into the mold of what someone who is a holistic health coach looks like or acts like, or talks like, or someone who's an intuitive eating counselor. I'm not going against intuitive eating or against holistic health. It Same thing with, I don't need to show up 
in the mold of what someone thinks a mom should look like or a working mom should look like or show up like. I can wear the dang lipstick. I can wear some funky glasses. I can be a little silly on camera teaching cooking classes. I can teach cooking classes and talk about meal planning and meal prep and also talk about intuitive balanced eating. I can do what I need to do to serve myself and my family well. I can take extra self-care time and I don't need to apologize for any of it. And I want to give you the permission to do the same. The world needs you to show up as you unapologetically, not the you that you think you should be, not the you that others expect you to be, but the you that feels right to you deep in your soul, the you that God created you to be. And I had no intentions of showing up on this podcast today and giving you all a pep talk, (laughs) but here I am. Because this year has been a time of hardship for many of us. There's a lot of sadness, a lot of loss of so many things this year. And I want to recognize that and I want to hold space for that. And I want to share that I am grieving for you and with you for all of the things that have been lost this year, whether it's experiences, whether it's people. I lost my own papa, my dad's dad this year whether it is normalcy, there's been a lot of loss and a lot of hardship and that's okay. And we can hold the space for that and we can also hold the space for the fact that I think for many of us, this has been a massive time of growth and perspective change. And for that, I am so grateful and I'm so excited to bring that into 2021. So a couple things that are coming up in 2021 here in the Healthy Balanced Mama podcast and Healthy Balanced Mama's world, you're going to hear me talk a lot more about balanced eating. Intuitive eating will always be a part of the conversation, and I teach it within the Super Mama Society and my course, Uncomplicated Eating, but I'm going to bring balanced eating as a whole into the conversation more because I truly believe it's where intuition and intention for health and wellness and living as our best selves align. With that, I have a brand new mini course that is centered around this that will be released to the Super Mama Society first when it opens on January 1st and then to the public in late February. So if you're not on my email list, head to healthybalancedmama.com slash list, and that'll give you access to my free stress-free eating guide, uh, another email with a ton of resources, um, as well as get you on the list for updates. I send out a Healthy Mama Monday email every week that shares with you just kind of a roundup of some of the things I've shared that week, as well as, you know, some tips and tools, the podcast episode that week. Um, it's usually fairly short and sweet and just kind of share with you the the most important updates, but it'll also be able to share with you when the Super Mama Society launches, which will be Friday this week, as well as um, when Balanced Eating Essentials, my mini course, launches at the end of February. I'm also going to be bringing you more practical tips for simplifying getting meals on the table without the stress. So things like meal planning, meal prep, stocking your fridge and your pantry, and learning how to be a confident cook. This includes a brand new podcast series that will be launching on January 1st. I have, I'm so, so excited about this. So stay tuned for that in a couple days. And then I'm also, like I mentioned, going to share more about confident cooking. I'm so excited to bring cooking delicious food from scratch into the picture more and to help you nourish yourself and your family really well in a way that is delicious and doesn't feel hard and doesn't feel complicated. I talk about uncomplicated eating. I also want to bring uncomplicated cooking into the mix. We've also got some changes that are happening in our family, and I'm not quite ready to share them yet. No, I am not pregnant and no babies on the horizon. (laughs) Um, But we definitely have some big changes happening. Um, So I will share those when the time is right. But overall, I'm looking forward to 2021. I know that nothing major is going to change when the clock clock strikes midnight on January 1st, but I do believe that for all of us, it's a time for a fresh start, and we can embrace that. 
So I hope you all have a happy, healthy New Year's. I cannot wait to see what the new year brings for you. And I can't wait to share with you what it brings for me. I'll talk to you next year. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Healthy Balance Mama podcast. If you loved it, would you take a screenshot and share it with a friend over on Instagram and tag me in it? It helps me so much to know what you love and are taking away from each episode. If you really loved it, would you hop over to iTunes and give me a star rating and review? Every rating and review helps this podcast be seen and heard by more women who need to hear the message of balance and wellness without deprivation. It's the best free gift you could give me. And as a reminder, the information and opinions on this podcast are meant for education and inspiration only and are not to be taken as medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with a trusted practitioner before making any changes. Have a beautiful day, friend, and I'll see you in the next episode.